Hi, the Euphrates River has delivered Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia unparalleled prosperity during the past 6,000 years. It has served as the region's primary water source. They have never seen anything like that in terms of growth and fertility. However, the river is changing, and as a result, questions are emerging everywhere. Join us as we explore the horrifying details that scientists have discovered regarding the changes to the Euphrates River and what that might entail. Water shortages are affecting millions of people in Syria and Iraq as the Euphrates, the region's longest river, dries up. In the long history of the planet, various catastrophes have visited it. The Euphrates River finally drying out is the most recent. What does this entail for humanity's future then? The Euphrates banks have historically been the home to a number of civilizations, the Mesopotamian Empire being one of the most significant. The empire was right in the midst of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in an area that's called the Fertile Crescent. That's because the area achieved the best of the river. Likewise, the era flourished along with it. That region is now part of Iraq. Officially, the 1740-mile river is Asia's longest river. The river flows from Turkey via Syria, Iraq, and Turkey before merging with the Persian Gulf. The river basin has evolved together with the rest of the planet. The river's natural flow has changed since humans first settled nearby thousands of years ago. One of the first to benefit from the Euphrates River was the ancient metropolis of Babylon. With the city's rapid growth came the notion that whoever controlled the river's water would perhaps enjoy the greatest success. The river's water had to be divided after the Lusan Treaty. It was necessary to regulate the entire use of water and make choices regarding it. This was crucial since one location couldn't simply capture all the water and leave the other places without any. As a result, the nations had to collaborate to discuss and decide how to ration off the use. Turkey and Iraq reached a consensus in 1946. It stated that Turkey has to first obtain Iraq's approval before making any adjustments to the river. In order to regulate the overall amount of water flowing into Turkey, Iraq was also allowed to construct dams on the river within Turkish territory. But what if people had ever been willing to make choices that could benefit others when they could keep it all to themselves? Focused primarily on water development measures on the Euphrates to lessen their flooding. Soon after commencing their efforts, they started working on hydroelectric projects and started focusing more on things like drinking water. Water consumption became increasingly important. Competition for water then became a problem as each country's population increased, leading Syria and Turkey to build dams to prevent floods and serve as a backup. As the construction competition between the Ripian nations intensified during droughts, flood mitigation projects quickly changed into irrigation projects. The hydroelectric producing stations were also taken into account because they were important sources of drinking water. The need to construct these facilities and power plants is increasing along the two rivers. Every time they pass over the arid plains of Iraq and Syria, natural evaporation has enlarged the water's pool. As each nation worked toward its unique national development, water loss was made worse by the construction of river dams. The southeast region of Turkey also saw several development initiatives. The administrations in Syria and Iraq started concentrating on agricultural development and the projects they began, notably land reforms. And large-scale irrigation projects required enormous amounts of water, including the Southeast Anatolia project, often known as a gap or started at the same time as Turkey. The gap was created in the 1980s to boost the production of hydroelectric electricity in Turkey's undeveloped SE areas. This this effort included nine provinces and resulted in the construction of 22 dams and 19 power plants. In addition to providing irrigation, energy, and drinking water, the dams were built to prevent flooding. In addition, they were constructed so that, in the wake of Syria and Iraq, the economic climate in the southeast of the country would be permanently altered. Assert that the flow of the Tigris and Euphrates was hampered by the Turkish government. The river's water had to be divided up to achieve its goal. Following the Lausanne Treaty, decisions had to be made about how to manage all water use. This was essential since one place couldn't simply take all the available water and leave the neighboring areas lacking any. Therefore, the nations were forced to confer and choose how to ration the usage. Why is this river so unique? The border of the Garden of Eden was marked by the Euphrates River. The Euphrates River also served as the upper bound 
boundary set by the Lord for Abram's land grant. Nimrod founded the Babylonian religion at the Euphrates River, which is also the location of the Tower of Babel, which was built as an affront to the Most High. The region where the Euphrates River is located is where many significant biblical events occurred. However, there has been a lot of discussion about the divine Euphrates River, and there is some evidence to support these claims. According to certain biblical scholars, the Euphrates and Tigris drought is a result of Christ's second coming. This is because the Bible's book of Revelations provides evidence that the end of times are drawing close. According to the book of Revelations, the six angels mentioned the Euphrates River before pouring down his bowl on the enormous revenue frets, causing its waters to dry up so that the kings from the east might enter. Another biblical allusion to Revelation 9.14 mentions the four liberated angels being bound to the mighty Euphrates, which corresponds to the four horns of the golden altar, referenced in Exodus 27. The voice that John heard speaking these words came from one of two places. Demons are frequently restrained in shackles. What a bleak night and supposedly fallen angels. These angels are also described in the Bible as evil beings held captive at the great Euphrates River's bottom. Surprisingly, the first murder is claimed to have taken place along the vast Euphrates River, which is said to have helped these fallen angels for thousands of years as a well-known connection to human wrongdoing. Strange voices have apparently been heard beneath the dying river, adjacent to the Garden of Eden, close to the Euphrates region, which supports this claim. The Euphrates River incident, as depicted in her artwork of the Euphrates River, is increasingly believed by Bible scholars to be a sign of Christ's second coming as a result of this evidence. Reveals some landlines as well. Many people have also discovered tunnels in the ruins that they think are still the tunnel system below ground is depicted in another picture or the countless tombs, which are now more apparent due to the water levels dropping. Missions have been sent out to find historical locations and shed light. What transpired in ancient Babylon, the empire that once experienced enormous riches, has the general public on edge. The Euphrates banks have historically been the home to a number of civilizations, the Mesopotamian Empire being one of the most significant. The empire was right in the midst of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in an area that's called the Fertile Crescent. That's because the area achieved the best of the river. Likewise, the ever flourished along with it. That region is now part of Iraq. Officially, the 1740 mile river is Asia's longest river. The river flows from Turkey via Syria, Iraq, and Turkey before merging with the Persian Gulf. The river basin has evolved together with the rest of the planet. The river's natural flow has changed since humans first settled nearby thousands of years ago. One of the first to benefit from the Euphrates River was the ancient metropolis of Babylon. With the city's rapid growth came the notion that whoever controlled the river's water would perhaps enjoy the greatest success. The river's water had to be divided after the Lusanne Treaty. It was necessary to regulate the entire use of the water and make choices regarding it, and leave the other places without any. As a result, the nations had to collaborate to discuss and decide how to ration off the use. Turkey and Iraq reached a consensus in 1946. Turkey, Syria, and Iraq started constructing their dams during the following two decades in an effort to capture as much water for themselves as feasible. More hydroelectricity was being generated in the following regions as each dam was built, facilitating their ability to expand their economy. But as you can see, if there is just one river and multiple dams are built on top of it, whoever is at the end of the river will only receive the leftovers. The water that spills over the dams or is released after they contribute to the generation of energy, which falls short of the entire potential of the river. Iraq was therefore understandably unhappy about it. The amount of water in Iraq's dams decreased from a constant 15.3 cubic kilometers in 1973 to 9.4 cubic kilometers in 1975, which was significant enough to raise serious concerns. Things deteriorated to the point where Iraq vowed to bomb Syria. However, the situation was averted when Saudi Arabia and the Soviet Union stepped in and assisted the two nations in reaching a deal. But this was only the beginning. Year after year, as more and more people wanted access to the water, they forgot that it was a natural resource that needed to be managed and cared for as well. As a result, problems with controlling the river's waters grew exponentially. What happens when all you do is try to take from a resource that is so great? The situation progressively deteriorated and the Euphrates River experienced the same thing. This river was so large that it was clearly visible from orbit. What can you currently see? They are merely the remains of what was once flowing freely and brought fertility and life to the world. It's a truly terrible image. Today, it is very alarming to witness the river, which was functioning perfectly, deteriorate to the point that it no longer even appears to have any water. Nothing but dryness is present. People must travel great distances just to obtain a few bottles of drinking water. Crops have withered away. There are no indications of any trees, and there are no crops. 
9 million Syrians who reside close to the Euphrates River now face danger to their lives if authorities are unable to come up with a suitable solution for the river. Overall, life is tight, but it turns out that this terrible transformation wasn't as unexpected as we first thought. There was talk about it hundreds of years ago. The information is typically not so old because we only discuss the facts here, stuff we can currently see and verify, but not in this video. We're going to travel way back, all the way back to the Bible and the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelations chapter 16, there is a passage, the great river Euphrates water was dried up when the sixth angel poured down his bowl on it, clearing the path. This indicates that the bowl was present for the eastern kings. The river's water was removed, and as a result, it completely dried up. In that time, it might have been the cup, but now it's the dams within this. We developed a cup that would completely remove the water, leaving only the ground below. Book of Revelation chapter 9 verse 14 addresses the sixth angel with the trumpet. The four angels who were imprisoned at the great river Euphrates were freed. The river must not be present for that to occur. According to the prophecy, the angels would be turned out from the riverbed's foundation, and as of right now, everything appears to be in place for that to happen. People are persuaded that the river drying up is the beginning of the chain of events in light of all of this. That would ultimately result in the return of Christ. The Euphrates River is considered to be near the Garden of Eden. Thus, it would make even more sense for Christ to defeat his foes and establish his heavenly kingdom here. Watchman Ministries pastor Joseph Cabaletta recently presided over the Watchers Conference. He also thinks that this is it. He said that the river drying up is the only beginning of the end of the world and advised Ugandans to be on the lookout for it. What remains to be determined is which other predictions may also be coming to pass. And what do these significant developments portend for the future of the entire world? We might just have to wait a little longer to find out, but based on how things currently stand, things are only getting worse, and the course that things are taking is nothing short of terrible. And that concludes this fascinating subject. What do you think about all the bizarre, unexpected changes that the Euphrates River is undergoing? Do you believe that the fulfillment of the prophecies in the Book of Revelation foretells the end of the world? Do you believe there will be other indicators of a global apocalypse? Please express your thoughts in the comments below. For more videos like this, please click the like button, rate the video, and subscribe to our channel to see more of these videos. Bye.